everyone, Temporal here, and today I want to talk about Pokemon Legends Arceus. I beat this yesterday, night before, and it was a lot of fun. This was a really fun game. You can see it took about 29 hours. I'd say about 20 of that was going through the first three zones in a pretty slow manner, catching a fair number of Pokemon, getting to do some good stuff there. And then those last few were, okay, let's kind of speed through these last two zones and finish the game here. And I think that's actually important. The reason I bring that up is this game, well, I'd say it was a lot of fun, like a lot of fun. The core gameplay loop was addicting. I wouldn't want to do it again two years from now. Like I could easily see myself putting another 20 hours into this game of going out there and catching Pokemon and finishing off this Pokedex and getting up to an eight star member with more of our research tasks done for our notebook here. You can see we've got these research tasks. I could definitely see wanting to do that going, hey, let's get these Pokemon. And that would be great, but Here's effectively how this works. Right, most of you have played it, and I'm sure most of you have probably understood the gameplay loop at this point, is you go out there, you find a Pokemon, you catch that Pokemon, and then you probably want to catch it like three to ten times. And as you're catching it, maybe three to ten times, maybe battling it and fainting it a few times for other research tasks like these that you can see here, you're going, okay, do that. As you're doing that, you're moving a little bit to find more of them, or the time of day is changing, and then you find a few other Pokemon, and you want to do that same thing. And you kind of generally work your way in the direction maybe of progressing the plot and that's great that's perfectly fine we're happy with that but that's not something that you're going to want to do forever catching the same pokemon 10 times or 25 times as some of these would want if you tried to max that out you really only need 10 of these for any individual page that's something that's fun but it does wear off it's something that had fun because of its novelty like I look at this and go, can this be the future of mainline games? Like, this is the most innovative Pokemon game they've given us forever. This is what so much of the fandom has wanted. And I think the answer is no. I think there's elements of this that we can take, but releasing another one of these games two years from now with a different Pokedex of two to 300 Pokemon, maybe in a different region also back in time, that would not be appealing to me two years from now. Maybe three or four years from now, that would be a, hey, it's worn off, you know, it's been long enough but i think they're gonna want to crank games out faster than that so what could they do could this take over for the mainline game since it was better than the mainline games we've really gotten and i'm gonna say no and is that a just me thing is that a okay well temporal you're clearly not a catcher like if we look over at your pokedex here you've only caught oh, let's go here you've only caught 127 of these pokemon so far you're not like a catcher there's shiny hunters out there who will play way more than 40 hours of catching pokemon that's just what they do Absolutely. That's absolutely right that in the Pokemon world, in the fans and the people who enjoy it, there are people who do that shiny hunting and catching really is a huge part of what they do and they can just do it for hundreds of hours. And that's great, but there's also casual playthrough people. There's also competitive battlers, breeders, all sorts of things make up sort of what, who buys the games, who plays the games. And you do want to have broad enough appeal. I think this is totally fine because of its novel, novel aspect for the broad appeal, even though the battling is light, even though the breeding doesn't exist, like even though the plot is still pretty darn on rails. Like I think that worked out fine, but I think if we're looking at this Honestly, most of us are going to go, hey, 40 hours of catching is probably enough, or even a playthrough is probably enough, and wouldn't necessarily want to follow this formula again two years from now. Uh, I think a new mainline game, if it wanted to work off of this, would have to take the good stuff and evolve it further, if we wanted this type of game to sort of take over and be the every two year type release thing, which I think there are a lot of people out there hoping for, which is part of why I'm doing this video. So let's talk about what made this game good. The thing that really makes this game the best is that your Pokemon and the Pokemon themselves feel a lot more alive than they have in previous games. We take our Pokemon out of Pokeballs here. And you might say, oh, well, you could do something similar in Sword and Shield. You could go to the camp and play with them. Or, hey, you could get Pokemon in previous Pokemon games. You could have one Pokemon follow you around. And that's true. 
But we've gotten a fair bit more in terms of you feeling like your Pokemon can do stuff with you. A, I can pull them out of Pokeballs like this. The truth is, this doesn't do much. They're not going to, like, protect me if other Pokemon show up or anything like that. Though that would be cool. They're not going to, like, oh, I deployed my Charmander and it lit the cave so I can see further. That's not really what they're doing currently. But even just this helps. What we really do get out of them is more of a hey they can go gather resources for us we can throw them at stuff to start battles they can fall asleep on us as we see Krikatoon doing there that's great oh they're all taking naps that's pretty great so it's cool that we can do those things and the pokemon feel a lot more alive here i think there's a lot more room to do better here but the pokemon feeling alive you not having to go into a second screen for battles you not being like i can use my pokemon to accomplish some hm and then, you know, that's done in the overworld, but really doesn't feel like the Pokemon doing it because I don't see the Pokemon doing it. I just see a little sprite or maybe in the more modern stuff, I even just summon in a Bidoof to do it real quick. Like that's, that's not really, that didn't really feel alive. Your Pokemon were really only present in battles in most of the Pokemon games. So this feels a lot better, even if it actually isn't that much of a step up in what they're doing. Other things that have felt pretty good are, hey, these stealth mechanics, having tall grass, being able to creep around, sneak up on Pokemon to help capture them, or to get the jump on them for a battle, or to not have them bother you, that's pretty good. And I think we should keep that. I think that's definitely something that future games could incorporate. We could reverse tall grass. Tall grass in mainline games has been the, this is the dangerous spot, this is where you run into Pokemon, and here we reversed it. And I think we could keep that reversal of like, hey, you can sneak through tall grass, that adds a nice little extra element to the game. I don't know that future games would want you to be able to catch, you know, level 50 Pokemon, fully evolved Pokemon, aggressive Pokemon as easily as you can with Pokeballs without battling them, but that's ultimately going to be up to the individual game. If we see, keep such a heavy catching focus, which I would advise against in the, some of the future games, that would be necessary, but if we scaled back on that, if we kept some of these Pokemon natures of like aggressive, if they see you they'll attack you, versus frightened of you, if they see you they'll run, versus um, the sort of neutral of, hey, they'll let you walk right up to them and throw a Pokeball at them. They don't really care. Like, I think that balance was also good, and it helps the Pokemon feel more alive. It helps the world feel more alive, and that was good. And then the zones being explorable rather than strictly a hallway simulator, like a lot of RPGs are, where you're very much going from point A to point B. Don't get me wrong, this game very much has a main plot and you can't get off the rails of the main plot, but simply having our world where we can go, hey, we have our world and we can see out here on these worlds, you know, we could go to a quick deploy screen here real quick, wouldn't that be great? And it'll show us what we need to. And we can see on our deploy world, oh, look, we can go to these different places. We can explore these different places, even if, yes, we had to tackle them in a certain order and then retackle them in a certain order. Being able to explore those and not just have them be a, you're going from point A to point B in this path that maybe has one or two branch offs to go get items or to go find, you know, a specific place where Pokemon spawn. That was helpful. So, like, that's another thing that maybe not as important as your Pokemon feeling alive but was something that, hey, this is pretty darn cool and something we could potentially keep. But that brings us over to the things that, okay, well, what are the problems with this game? What did it not do well? What would we need it to do better? Or, and by need it to do better, obviously we can all look at this game and say, oh, but the graphics are obviously terrible. Like we can see, we can see how poorly my character stands on the landscape here. In some portions, you'll even see the white outline around my character and it's just rough and doesn't work. <laughs> okay, they, they have some funny animations there. Um, so yeah, there's the animation stuff, but that's not really what I'm focused on. Well, yes, that absolutely does have an impact on games sold. It, it really does, guys. The marketing data is really, really clear on that, unfortunately. Um, what I'm more interested in is some of these other element. So we look at these problems and I'd say the biggest one is what I sort of started by focusing on, which is that this gameplay loop will lose its appeal and isn't something that I think people are going to want to just do a ton of as time goes on like oh let me keep going that that's not let me keep doing the catching the same pokemon 10 times catching a pokemon once is exciting for most people, just about everyone. Catching it 10 times Battling it 10 times to get to a point where, oh, we have 
Oh, let me pull this up here. Oh, we've defeated 15 of them. That's not going to be as fun. And it's not always 15. And we can see here it's 25. There it was 10. Here it's 15. But that's not as fun for people. And yes, there's some diversity and you can go, oh, well, you can catch them or defeat them to get to your 10 research tasks. But even so, everyone's going to play with some level, not extreme efficiency, but some level of efficiency in mind. And catching is going to be something that they're going to do a lot. Or beating the same Pokemon a lot of times, still not the most rewarding thing in the world where, hey, let's just one shot a bunch of wild Pokemon. So... This core gameplay loop, I'd say that's one of our weaknesses if we were to look at this going forward. And then another weakness is, even though your Pokemon feel a lot more alive in this game, they're really only doing a couple things. They can stand there, like I'm having them do here, which, you know, don't get me wrong, that's cute, they're sleeping. Hey there, Gudra, how you doing? They can break some rocks for you in a few places. They can gather resources. Or they can kind of stand there and get beat up by wild Pokemon while you chuck Pokeballs at them and get beat up pretty fast, I might point out, even if they're significantly higher level than those Pokemon. Or they can one-shot, basically, wild Pokemon. That's not a ton that they can actually do. Like, they feel a lot more real in this game by comparison to previous games, but I think there's still more that they should be doing. So we'll get into that. How can we make them feel more alive? Um, we've got, you know, they're sort of one-dimensional here. So what? how do we get into this? How could, not necessarily this game be better, this game I think is great, but how could we keep this gameplay formula interesting for another game that maybe pulls some of its principles or more games like this or brings some of this back to the mainline games? What would be important? And I'd say the first thing is, again, the Pokemon feeling alive was huge, so let's focus on that. And my way of focusing on that to start would actually be, let's take away these extra effectively ride Pokemon we got. The ability to go, hey, this Pokemon isn't in my party, but I'm gliding with it. I'm surfing with it. I'm climbing with it. I'm on a mountain. I'm riding it like that. No. Use your Pokemon. I know it's more design work to do that because you have to create more Pokemon that can do it rather than just having one Pokemon for your glide animations, you have multiple. Rather than having one Pokemon that you can ride on the back of, you'd probably have about a dozen. Like, I get that that's more work, and I also get that that limits your team diversity a bit because you're going to feel like you want a Pokemon that you can ride in your team. You want a Pokemon that you can glide within your team. And like, hey, wasn't that the whole battle to get rid of HMs of... We want to be able to build our teams however we want, and requiring us to have these HMs limits our team. Well, yeah, but, like, if you want the world to be alive, and not just if you want the world to be alive, they're freaking Pokemon. Like, if you were out in the world and you were like, hey, it's probably a pretty... If I can carry six Pokemon with me, and you were out and about in your daily life, you'd probably bring a flyer with you. Oh, but it doesn't make my team the most competitive because my team wants to be balanced in just this way and I don't want to have to have a fly. Come on, no one's going to give up that convenience. That would be like giving up the convenience of a smartphone. You're, you're not going to do that even if the cost is you have that. So like, that's fine. That's real enough. I think that would actually be a good thing. And it'll again, make your Pokemon, make your team feel more alive. If you go, hey, I can, if I have a big enough bird, maybe I can glide with it. Or maybe I can use it to send a message back home or something. Or maybe I can use, you know, my Arcanine, I can ride on it oh i don't have any pokemon that's big enough for me to ride on like that on the ground okay then i guess i'm walking or oh i have a Goldeen. hey that's cool but you know what it's not a lapras so i can't go out there surfing with it still perfectly fine to have a Goldeen, but like some of these things where you're going hey you use your Pokemon to interact with the world because that's sort of part of the fantasy, we'll say, of Pokemon there. And it would help, I think, the world continue to feel more alive here. And you could do more. You could intentionally make it so that you can't build a team that could do all of it. You could be like, hey, some of this riding stuff that we talked about, surfing, riding, gliding, things like that. You could also do more though, like, hey, if you have a psychic type in your party, it gives you a little bit of a spidey sense when you're about to get jumped by a wild Pokemon. Or, hey, you have maybe a ground or a fighting type and that lets you break boulders 
arrows to get through certain places or maybe having a fire pokemon lights caves for you or makes you not take damage when you're wandering in a tundra region like we had in this game like there's plenty that you could do there or you could have more generic stuff like hey you can set pokemon to ward off wild pokemon so they won't challenge you so even if you're being a little less sneaky they don't just jump you and fight you and be as aggressive because you've set a Gudra out there to ward them off and they're going eh we see that Gudra sort of walking out there with you we don't really want to jump you or maybe you set something to go sniff out Pokemon you've seen before so if you're looking for Pokemon you're looking for a specific Pokemon and you've battled it before because you want to catch it you can go hey Arcanine you remember the scent of that go sniff it out that sort of thing like there's things that we could do here and obviously the sky's the limit it's all development work it's you know in some ways too many choices you don't have to do all of it you could do an infinite amount of it but more stuff like this really is going to lean into your pokemon feeling live and it's also going to lead us into our next topic of we need puzzles the puzzles in legends arceus didn't use your pokemon the puzzles we got were basically text-based we don't want text-based oh we solved this with in the snow temple we're looking at some statues to see what they're facing and memorizing or writing down which order to enter our text-based commands or very much the same thing we got text-based puzzles for the lake spirits that in a world where we can send out our pokemon to do stuff why can i not go hey let me go ahead and throw voltorb onto that button like it's a zelda game Voltorb, stay right there. And then, oh, oh, I also need to press that button at the same time. Great. And while doing that, Raptor, I need you to go fetch that thing that's up there that's out of my reach. Cool. Let us do that sort of thing. Like, that would be so much better for our puzzles, and that fits into the spirit, the long spirit of Pokemon. Pokemon hasn't been afraid of puzzles. We've had strength puzzles to drop boulders, to change tides, things like that. Like puzzles are a thing we have, but now let us actually use our Pokemon to do them. And in more than just a way of, oh, okay, maybe it's me, maybe it's my Pokemon. Maybe someone's using strength to move this boulder, but who can tell type thing. Like let them feel more alive. I think getting puzzles into this would help quite a bit with the gameplay diversity that it has. And then you could also make the next game's focus something different. You can look at this and say, hey, this put a game very hard focus on catching. Maybe for the next game we go, let's do a hard focus on battling. And, you know, it doesn't have to be like the hardest of hard focus on battling, but it could be something like, just as an example, maybe you still deploy to different regions like you did this in that Monster Hunter style, but in those regions you go, hey, there's trainers that are wandering. You have a random collection of trainers that are wandering, and maybe they'll pick fights with you, and they reload every time, and maybe you don't get exactly the same ones every time, and you sort of need to build your clout in each area for the top trainer to come or to be willing to take a battle from you that sort of thing and maybe the game's more about that and you put less emphasis on catching but you still have to use your pokemon to get to these places because maybe the places where some of the better trainers hang out require you to be able to climb up a cliff or require you to be able to navigate through a cave or go out to an island that requires surfing whatever the case may be there like i think something like that and it doesn't have to be battle focused you could also do a more standard main story type game with gyms and all that and even put it a little bit back on rails, but still let your Pokemon actually solve puzzles for you. Let you sneak through grass and, you know, get the jump on Pokemon, things like that. Um, yeah. Or maybe you even go, hey, if we wanted to get weird, let's throw a gambit system into this game so that when we get jumped by three, four wild Pokemon at once, maybe we can't issue orders to four wild po to four of our Pokemon at once, but there's no reason we should 1v4 if it's not a sanctioned battle, if it's not an official battle between us and a trainer, or like if criminals, like an evil team are jumping at us, why would we 1v1? Like, Let's deploy six Pokemon. Well, then you could build a Gambit system. And ooh, that becomes an extra layer to it. Of you've built a Gambit system where you're sort of pre-programming how you want your Pokemon roughly to fight rather than giving direct orders for, you know, bigger battles, that sort of thing. Again, just throwing ideas out there. The real point that I want to get to here is this was a fantastic game, 
but I really hope we don't just see this game with a different Pokedex in a different historic region released again two years from now. I really hope that we bring some of this back to the mainline, or even make this the new type of mainline Pokemon game, but we do more to make the Pokemon alive, and we don't put quite so much emphasis on catching, because while catching was totally fine for a game, I do want to bring more of that gameplay style diversity into Pokemon. That's part of what works well for Pokemon. Enemy. Anyway, let me know your guys' thoughts. If you hate my ideas, put let me know in the comments below if you love them. That's cool too. Feel free to drop a like, consider subscribing, and if you'd like me to see do a video specifically on what a more battle-heavy one might look like. Like I gave a little bit of an example there of oh deploy to the different regions. I could go a fair bit more depth into that as an example. If you want to see that video, let me know in the comments below. And for now, we'll go ahead and call it. Those are my thoughts on this new Legends Arceus game. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Thanks, Temporal Out.